So I think we're living at an amazing moment that honors the power of the outsider. And I think that power, you know, implied in your question, is the power to just look at things freshly. You know, I, um, and I was very, I tried when I wrote the India book not to, um, I didn't want to write the know-it-all book or attempt to write the know-it-all book. I wanted to figure out how do you take unique advantage of not knowing um, because there is a power in not knowing and there's a power in, um, there's a power in things being fresh to you. Um, and I look at whether it's President Obama or Trevor Noah or any number of the, the literature and a number of people who are cross-cultural authors who write fiction now, um, the castaways are now the voices we actually like to hear most loudly. And I think that's actually one of the great things happening in the world. And do you think that for the first time in history you have a comparative advantage growing up as an outsider or at least perceiving yourself as an outsider? Yeah, I mean, as I a think, leader, I think that's the case. I think I think it's also the case that there are still large numbers of these people who are very poor and who are treated horribly in between these countries. And if you're a Latvian in Russia, it's still a problem. Um, but um, I think there's an opportunity for um, people who see duality to be to really play a very special role in in this age of um, complete misunderstanding of the world. I mean, I have a, a friend who's half German and half Egyptian. To watch her, you know, constantly pivot in her mind between these, the society of intense order and the society of loving chaos, and, th and the way she's able to hold both gives her a power in seeing the world. Just to cite one example of one person, that really, you just imagine in any boardroom, any situation, any fellowship you'd throw her into would just be, make her immensely powerful relative to someone died in kind of one world.